Oh, that was easy. What do you love about the crossword? What do I love about the crossword? Um, it makes me feel inadequate. <laughs> no, um, it just gives me something to do in the morning. I also like that it's tactile, that it's paper. And then it gives me something that's not my phone to look at um, and do, which I'm trying to do a lot more of, and it's really hard. So this is my one way of doing it in the morning, at least. series so they commission local artists to make the, the arts on the cover so you have like little animals you have a little donkey you have trees it's quite beautiful i like it it's it's about connection it's about being with other people um, because i don't like being by myself on stage i find it to be quite miserable and quite unhappy um and I know how many times I've played like, you know, a Paganini or a Flack that I've just been deeply unhappy with. Um, and I don't want to do that anymore, <laughs> um, to be honest. Um, but I mean, at the same time, I think also there's a greater, um, there's a greater kind of possibility that opens up when you have other voices, when you have other ideas, um, that isn't kind of present when it's just one person. And that's not to say that, you know, one person can't be really inspired and, um, uh, inventive and playful, but there is a certain kind of um, relationship that gets built um, with other musicians um, that creates a sort of working organism and that creates a own beauty that's not kind of possible with just one person. My mom um, was really sad that she didn't get to play a string instrument as a kid, um, which is what she always wanted to play. So that's why she started my brother on cello. And then she started me on violin when I was three. Um, not really of my own volition. Um, but um, I stuck with it mostly because I was not allowed to quit. Um, and I faked my way through 10 years of playing violin about. Um, did, you know, Suzuki, um, youth orchestra. Um, I really hated youth orchestra. There was a time when, I, I'm not sure if I've ever told you the story, I got so pissed that I had to do youth orchestra. The, the day that they like handed up parts, I went home and I ripped up my parts into like, I want to say it was like an impressive amount of pieces. It was like, it was like just kind of shards of music that was like you really wouldn't be able to piece it back together. And my mom like told me that I had to piece it back together and play a youth orchestra. So that was, that was a devastating experience for me. Um, um, and that was before I like wanted to do music or anything. I was I thought I was gonna do something, but not music, you know. I mean, especially playing with other people, you create a sense of community, a sense of um, yeah. You you create relationships, um, and through that you can um, you know create beauty. You can create. You can say something, I guess, with the music, um, and. To me, I think that's that's the thing that really changed things for me. Um, I know this is it's it's like so cliche to say, but I do think of art as the ultimate kind of expression of humanity. Um, 
and that that's not to you know invalidate other professions or anything like that honestly in, in a lot of ways they have more useful ways of helping us um, and of creating kind of a better world for us but I think in the end what what defines us is our ability to create and imagine beyond kind of the real and the kind of um, concrete reality that we live in you know in a certain moment um, and I think that's what's always kind of gravitated towards me um, is that ability to um, create moments that kind of affirm you as not you but you know the world and the audience and anyone who's listening or might, who might be listening um, to kind of affirm someone's humanity. It's kind of a zero to 100 um, because like you know you I don't think like at at the beginning of August last year, I think there's like a total of like 100 people in the world who knew who we were. And now it, it feels like to a certain degree, like, you know, all of these presenters and all these important people in the industry now want to see us and they want to know what we have to offer and they want to know what we're saying. And that creates a lot of pressure on us to, to be, um, not, I, I guess I don't want to even use the word perfect because that's a bullshit term, but like it creates, you know, it creates an immense amount of pressure. Um, and so learning how to navigate how every single person reacts to pressure and um, what that can do to someone um, and how many anxieties can build up and how many um, uh, different kind of, yeah, all of, the, all of those reactions, all of those um, kind of situations and circumstances can lead to not very pleasant moments um, and learning how to recognize that that might be how a certain person is dealing with that fear or that anxiety today or um, this week um, and learning how to be um, kind of gracious with that um, and understanding um, that that's where that person is and that's not necessarily where they need to be, but that's where they have no choice, I guess, but to be, I guess sometimes that's a better way of describing it um, because sometimes you have no choice in your brain going to a certain place. Um, so learning how to be understanding and respectful of that. Um, and at the same time, recognizing that sometimes um, beyond being respectful and understanding, you can demand that things also be better. Um, there's like that, you know, it's like a, it's a, not a cat and mouse game, it's a, it's a balancing act um, in between those two things. Um, and finding that balance is not something that has an answer. Um, and it's kind of this ever-evolving organism. <laughs> um, I think like we have a unique opportunity to um, not, I guess, I guess redefine, but also kind of um, recontextualize what quartet music means to us and create our own aesthetic way of going about different repertoire and of going about programming and of thinking about how we relate ourselves to an audience, to presenters, to the world. Um, and I think that's what's kind of super exciting um, is because it does present kind of that unique opportunity to do that. Um, the four of us each have four totally unique ways of interpreting things and of kind of asking um, for music to, re to be like represented, um, which that's not to say that, I mean, every any group of four people is gonna have that, but I think having so many opinions and so many kind of sensibilities within kind of such a group is like really rare. And that's what's, that, would, that is what kind of defines us, I think, in a, in a certain way. Good. Any last words? Um, I, I don't know, man. People need to play more Zanakis. Those are my last words. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs>